Michael Schneider. Can I get that rest? Close enough. Thank you, sir. I guess that's my cue. Excuse me, small poodle. Oh. I'm here basically because I was talking to Bea a couple of weeks ago and she was saying, why do I have to know anything about amps? I don't, don't understand amps. I've been lived a long time. Why do I need to know about amps? I know a little about volts and maybe something about watts. And I tried to explain it to her and after I had talked for about 10 or 15 minutes, she said something like, you know, that almost makes sense. It's almost as if you're talking sense. I can possibly grasp it. Why don't you come talk to Gallup Solar and maybe you can explain to them because we're a little confused on some of this stuff. So, you know, if I start talking nonsense and you don't understand, throw a shoe at me or wave or something like that. Um, I'm really a lousy public speaker. That's life. Um, I'm also seriously just self-taught. I'm here because oh, about 15 years ago I bought a few acres up uh, by the ice caves. So I would go out there and put down the sleeping bag and that kept rolling downhill because it was slow. So I built a platform and that was good and I thought, you know, it's a pain to haul the camping equipment so I built like a 12 by 16 shed and I thought, well, if I only had a refrigerator here I wouldn't have to haul so much ice when I come out here and that got me into trying to figure out something about how to run a refrigerator and maybe a few lights without actually paying a utility company large sums of money to run wires for long distances and things like that. So I'm basically self-taught, which means I'm going to try and, I mean, I, I probably don't know everything that one ought to know. So whatever I say, take it with a large bag of salt. And <laughs> before you electrocute yourself or burn down your houses, consult a professional, those sorts of things. I believe that everything I'm going to tell you is true. But it wouldn't be the first time in my life that I've been wrong. So that's your first warning. Um, so I'm gonna gonna try a little bit based on what I have learned in my little cabin out by the ice caves. And the first most important thing, this is my crib sheet, you that I'm, my notes, and you all got a copy of this, so you can probably follow along. Current in amps. Multiplied times the voltage is equal to watts. That's an important thing. Amps times volts equals watts. So for example, I have a visual aid here. This is a crock pot. You look at the bottom of the crock pot and it says something like 75 watts. And you know this runs on house current, which is 120 volts. So what times 120 is going to equal 75? You know you're looking at maybe three quarters of an amp. One amp times 120 volts would be 120 watts. Half an amp times 120 volts would be 60 watts. This is 75, so we're in there, you know, maybe six tenths of an amp, something like that. It works whether you're talking 110 or 12 volts or 5,000 volts, which is running across the top of the telephone poles out there, your power poles, those are usually 5,000 volts on the top, the top wire. It's always, this is for volts DC. If you're looking at things like motors or fluorescent lights, it's not quite that, uh, the formula is not quite accurate, but for ordinary purposes, for trying to run a refrigerator in a cabin, volts times amps equals watts. So B says to me, she says, you know, I always just look at look at at watts. And you buy a hundred watt solar panel, you get a hundred watts. And I tried to explain to her, well, you really don't. I've gotten ahead of myself. What I really want to do is try and give you folks an idea, just a, a sort of general feeling of what does volts mean and what does amps mean. So the next line there says volts make sparks and that's really important. You've all played with 9 volt batteries and 12 volt batteries. With a 12 volt battery from a car you can get a pretty good spark but not a really great spark. Uh, from 110 you can get a much better spark. 
Uh, if you're dealing, what I was taught in high school is that 10,000 volts will get you a spark a half an inch long. So high voltage makes for sparks. Um, and it also means that you need thicker insulation. The big, the big um, high current, high voltage towers that are metal that have the two arms with the for things hanging down, they got insulators about that long. You can see the wires hanging down from the insulators. They're that long because those are running at, I think, roughly 250,000 volts. That's why they need big insulators. So high voltage sparks insulation. Amps is a measure of current. And current is more or less how many electrons are going. And amperage makes heat. It doesn't make sparks, it makes heat. So if you're do dealing with more amps, you need thicker wire. We have here some visual aids. This is a serious piece of wire. You can see how much copper we got right there. If you read the fine print on the wire, it will say 1 slash 0 AWG. And it will say type THHN. That's all printed on the wire. It's kind of scraped off on this wire. And it's kind of fine print, but wire has markings. And this is 1 O type THHN. If you look on the other side of the crib sheet, you'll see something I just photocopied out of the National Electrical Code. And this is the National Electrical Code's version of how many amps you can run through a piece of wire. And if you look at the one, two, three, fourth column over, it's for type whatever, whatever, whatever type THHN. That's this type of wire. And if you look down the first column, that's the wire gauge, AWG, American Wire Gauge, also called gauge or number, like this is, you get number 10 wire, number 12 wire, that's AWG, American Wire Gauge. And you look down, you see one slash zero, you go three columns over, this thing will carry 170 amps. That's a lot of current. If you've got a new electrical service on a house in town, you're probably running a 200 amp service. This is what you need to run your house. Oh! This is probably what the inside of your house is, look, is wired with. You can see it's much thinner. If you read the fine print on this, it will say type THHN, and it will say 12 AWG. And if you look at 12 and run it across, it'll say you can run 30 amps through this. And what happens is if you try and run 170 amps through this because you're too cheap to buy the good wire, it's going to get hot. The insulation's going to melt and drip right off. You'll get a short circuit and you'll probably burn down your house. So if you want to go a little further, this is not THHN, this is type CW something, which is communication wire. It's actually four wires. You could probably see that tiny little wire there. That's a 22 gauge wire. It's good for telephone. I wouldn't put more than about an amp or two through this. You, once again, you put too many amps through it, it gets hot, you burn down your house. That's one of the reasons you have to pay attention to amps. Um, I went and looked at your three batteries in there. They're run in parallel. Those batteries, if you short circuit them, you can probably get 100 amps out of those batteries. They're hooked together with wire. With the insulation, it's about that thick. I didn't, I couldn't read the fine print on the wire, but I suspect it's a number 12 or a number 10 wire, which means if you get a sort of short circuit there and try and draw 100 amps through those wires, that wire is going to get hot real quick. Yeah. Um, on my, so this is why on my batteries, <laughs> this is what they sell for really people that want to spend a lot of money on car stereos. They sell it for car stereos, but it's really flexible, you see it. But this is a number four, a four gauge wire. And it doesn't say type THHN, but it says it's good for something like 200 degrees centigrade. Number four wire you can see, 95 amps. 
So this is what I've used for my cabin out in the mountains for the, from the battery to the inverter because that may be carrying 50, 75, 95 amps. Um, and it's expensive stuff, but it's easier to use because it's flexible. The equivalent of a THHN wire is going to be much harder to deal with because it's not as flexible. So high amperage fat wire because you use skinny wire with high amperage you get heat and that's what ends up burning your house down. Is that a clear answer to why you need at least some grasp of amperage? Um, one way to think about amperage is how many electrons do you have moving at a time? You got a lot of electrons moving, you got a lot of amps. And if you have a lot of electrons, you need a lot of copper for them to run through. That's basically sort of any, any real electrician would probably run screaming when they heard me say that, but that's sort of how I think about it. Um, voltage, it makes sparks. These wires, they, they have a voltage rating, it says on the outside, 600 volts. And if you look at the, the top of this table, which is the electrical code, it says this is how many amps, if you're anywhere between 0 and 2,000 volts. You use the same number of amps for the same size wire. So, to go back, amps make heat. Amps means they can wire. Volts make sparks. Now, either of them will kill you. In fact, that's the next warning. Electricity will kill you. And it'll kill you in one of two ways. One is to electrocute you, and the other is to burn your house down while you're inside. And it's not, you don't want it to burn the house down even if you're not inside. So, try and pretend you know what you're doing or consult somebody who actually does know what they're doing. Um, Is that sort of anybody getting a little vague notion of why, what volts are and what amps are here? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, feel free to, as I say, wave at me and get explanations. The next section on here is the product description of one of these, a solar panel. And I got it straight off of Amazon. It's a $112 panel and it claims to be a 100 watts, 12 volts, polycrystalline solar panel. And if you see their detailed description, it says peak power, P max, 100 watts. Then it says maximum power current, I, M, P, which is current maximum power. Why they call <coughs> amperage I, I don't know. They call volts V, but current they call I, and it's in amperes. Mystery to me. Maximum power voltage 17.79. But what happens when you go to use that in a system? See, my first thought when I was trying to put the system in the cabin is I looked at the back of the refrigerator and said 100 watts. I thought, I'll buy a 100 watt panel and I'll run the refrigerator. And then I thought, nighttime, that's not going to work. I'll buy two panels, I'll buy a 100 watt battery. And then one panel will charge the battery and I can, I can run the refrigerator all day and all night. No, it doesn't work that way. And the first thing you've got to remember is you don't get 100 amps out from a 100 amp panel. What you will have in your system, if it's like mine and I think like the other one in the, the, one in the other room, you're... You said 100 amp watts. Excuse me, 100, I meant 100 watts. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, talking too fast. Moment to collect thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> this maximum power voltage, voltage at 17.79. Yes. Is that a constant after other uses of appliance or everything from the inverter, or is that just what it puts out? After utilizing some other utility, is that when it reduced down to almost like 0.4 or 5, or, or, or is this at constant that it will produce from the inverter? That's what's produced from the panel. From the panel. By the time it gets out of the inverter, it's a whole different thing. And 
<coughs> the next section of the, the sheet of paper is running through figuring out what you get from your 100 watt panel by the time it's gone in and out of the battery and you're trying to run your refrigerator off it. Is that an answer? Yeah, so let's say this one takes three amp. I plug that thing in there and it will reduce three amp on this uh, voltage that shows here or would it be at constant 17 even utilizing that three amp heater or whatever. Is that what we're saying here or? Let me see if I can explain it more clearly. Okay. Give me another shot at it. If that doesn't work, ask your question again. You got your basic solar panel, you know, you got. And out of that is coming, what, what did it say, 18 volts, 17 point something, 18 volts. And a maximum of 5.63 amps. But that's 5.63 amps on a bright sunny day when the, sky, the sun is up there and it's pointed directly towards the sun. If it's pointed this way and the sun's over there, you're not going to get your 5.63 amps. You're going to get considerably less. So my rough guess is what you'd actually get from this panel over a few hours is probably maybe four and a half amps. So out of the panel you get 18 volts and four and a half amps and you're going into your charge controller charge controller and the charge controller is going to eat some of that voltage so out of your charge controller you're not going to get 18 volts you're going to need a minimum of 16 volts going in so you're okay here but out of that charge controller to charge a 12 volt battery you'll need somewhere between 13.7 and 14.4 volts. So you're going to get somewhere between 13.7 and 14.4.4 volts. You'll probably still be getting your 4.5 amps out of your charge controller and that is going into your battery. But that's not what's coming out of your battery. A fully charged cell, at least the, the deep cycle marine cells that I've been using, the fully charged battery will produce 12.7 volts. But the battery doesn't stay fully charged, so if you want to think about what you're actually getting, 12.5 volts you're still getting your four and a half amps. And look at that. You started with 18, .5, 18 times 5 point whatever that was, your 100 watts up here from your panel, which was 19 volts at roughly six amps is what you started with. But what's coming out of your, your battery to run your, and that of course is going into your inverter Okay, this is amps, this is volts, watts is equal to amps times volts, so four and a half times 12.5 is 62 and a half. So out of your, out of your 100 watt panel that's producing 100 watts, what you actually get to use is 62 and a half. That's one of the reasons why you can't just pay attention and say, I've got a 100 watt panel, because by the time you've gone through all these steps, you've got 62 and a half. And this is your, your inverter. And out of your, it's going in there, out of your inverter, you'll lose a little bit. So you're getting 62 and a half watts. You're producing 120 volts. Uh, volts is amps. I mean, watts is amps times volts. 120 times what is going to get you to 62? You're going to get roughly 0.5 amps at 120 volts, which is more or less equal to 60 watts out of your inverter. And that's the 60 watts you're going to use to try and run your 100 watt refrigerator, and it ain't going to work, which is why. You start with more panels, 
and then you buy more batteries and whatever. Is that more or less clear? You're losing you're losing because you're losing voltage from the panel to the charge controller. So the charge controller will reduce the voltage from the panel in order to give the battery what it wants. And then you're reducing, you're losing voltage because you need a higher voltage to charge the battery than you get out from the battery. And then it goes in. And so that's, that's why you're, you're a 100 amp panel. This is all DC. This is AC. The AC. Your inverter converts DC to AC. I think that answers the question. Uh, the refrigerator doesn't lay over on the other end. It doesn't get panel, uh, energy from the panel. It gets it from the battery. Through the, it the well, it gets it from the inverter. The inverter gets it from the battery. And the, ba the battery gets it from the charge controller. The charge controller gets it from the panel. Because you don't want to charge a battery at 18 volts. You'll overcharge the battery and kill it. So you need the charge controller to control the voltage to the battery. Is this starting to make a little bit of sense? You're right, yes. Um, what are the odds about that? It's unfortunately, the it did not, sh the sun did not shine for the whole two weeks. What are the disadvantages of uh, having that system set up into your Hogan or maybe whatever? Is there some disadvantage that we should know about? Or well, that's buy where. A bigger battery for storage or mm -hmm. something like that? Or is that would be the idea or the answer to that? Or if you go over and look at that battery, yes. you'll see a number on the side, and it will say 100 AH, and AH is amp hours. What that means is that that battery can put out one amp for 100 hours, 5 amps for 20 hours, 50 amps for 2 hours, sort of. You can't really draw 50 amps from that battery for very long at all. But on a theoretical sort of basis, that gives you an idea. And so you can get, um, from that battery, you can pull 20 amps. And 20 amps times... 12.5 volts, because it's not going to be fully charged for very long. Volts times amps equals 120 is 250 watts for 10 hours. Because 20 amps, oh, excuse me, 5 hours. Because 20 amps is a fifth of 100. So you can pull 20 amps out of your 100 amp hour battery for 5 hours. Or you can pull 10 amps for 10 hours. And that gets you 125 watts. And that will run your refrigerator. So that battery will run it for 10 hours. Of course, the refrigerator doesn't run constantly. You try and run one of those little cookers, it's going to run constantly. Refrigerator will kick on, refrigerator will kick off. So from one battery like that, it might last you 24 hours. It might last you 18, depending on how warm it is, how good the refrigerator is, how often it kicks on, how often it kicks off. But that's the sort of calculation, which is why this figure on the side of the, the battery, which is in amps, is vital. It is crucial. And that's, of course, when the battery is new. Um, what I got out at my little cabin at the moment is batteries that are sort of elderly. I should be getting 200 amp hours out of them. No, nope, they're old at, They're old batteries. If I'm getting 75, I'm surprised. I need to spend another couple of hundred bucks and get new batteries. Does that give you a clearer idea of the size, how to, how to roughly guess estimate the size of the batteries you will need. Okay. Uh, let's say that uh, I went down to <coughs> FDU, which is the 100 amp hour, 
I am starting to reduce down to 75 an hour. Can I rip this team back to where it will generate itself to uh, uh, 100 an hour and continues to? Yeah. No. If the sun comes up the next day. Not without the solar panel. Whatever it is in that, after inverter, hook it back up to where the 100 amp is. After, you, you can't do that. Not really, okay. no. Okay. That that's that's like a perpetual motion machine. I've never seen. I've got to do something. Well, so a, gen just a generator. That. A generator will do it. Gasoline generator. Continue. Okay. Some people use that as a backup. You have lots of other generators there. Yeah. yeah. So they just. I mean, after the inverter, well, like after whatever I had left in the amp hour, I can convert that to one twenty and then regenerate the itself up to. Uh, they're already gone. You can't. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, you need more okay. more power coming in somewhere. You can't you can't endlessly recycle this okay. power. Once the refrigerator is eating the power, okay. it's gone. Okay. Um, it'd be nice if you could, if you could just start the refrigerator, it would run forever. Yeah. I, if I could get a car, I didn't have to put gasoline into that. It'd be nice too, but <laughs> it hasn't worked out. Um, okay. Basically, I think that was. I got a question for you. Good. What, with the, um, you put that um, refrigerator on the system with only 60 watts coming out. What happens? Does the refrigerator try to run, or does it damage the refrigerator or motor? It might try and run and just fail to run. <laughs> yes. And would it damage the probably motor? Damage. It could well. Yes. Because what's going to happen is, instead of getting 120 volts out of it, you'll start only getting 80, 90, 60 until it, until it sort of balances itself out. And if you try and run a motor on less voltage than you need, you burn the motor out. I don't know if anybody here works with power tools, but you're out on a, on a job site, you've got 250 foot extension cord, if it's too small an extension cord to carry the number of amps, the voltage at the end of the extension cord will drop and your circular saw will burn out. So that's why they you know, tell you to use a good sized extension cord. It's the same problem of trying to draw too many amps through too skinny a wire. Um, did I answer the question? Yeah. I forgot yeah. the question. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We've, uh, uh, we've encountered this with uh, some of Gallup Solar's uh, off-grid systems in Pinion, if they had an off-grid system. And the, the key there is to have smart equipment. And in this case, a smart, uh, you know, you pay, get what you pay for, inverter. It, it will, if it senses that it's pulling yeah. more amps than it should do because the voltage is down, it yeah. just shuts down and detects the system, detects the, the load, the refrigerator, it just turns off. So every once in a while, uh, when they first got the system, they hooked up electric heaters. They didn't get the wood stove in. They had these electric heaters and just too much coal on the batteries, and the system just shut down to protect itself. And then I came called, and I said, well, that's supposed to heat with it. <laughs> Wait a few days until the sun shines, charges back, and it's working again. came back on. The so, problem with that is, uh, at least that I had, is I, I had a piece of medical equipment that I needed, and I took it out, and I plugged it into my system, and it drew too much power. And my little um, inverter said, oh, battery voltage had dropped, and the alarm went off. So at 3 in the morning, the darn thing is screaming oh, from across the room at me because the low voltage alarm is going off. And I had to drag myself out of bed and turn it off. But yes, they will do that. They will, uh, not, not the charge controller, but the, the inverter. That's the one, the inverter. That's the battery. All my squares look alike, but they're not. <laughs> they don't turn off by themselves? Like they, oh, it turned board. itself off, oh. but it, it did this alarm so that I would know the system had turned oh. off. And there might have been some way to disable the alarm if I had been thinking before I did this, but, you know, I wasn't, so, but, yeah. What else? Would you like to know how to, how to use ammeters and voltmeters? We can... We brought ammeters and voltmeters, and we can actually figure some of this out. You can buy, it's sort of crucial to monitor your voltage going into your battery, or coming out of your battery, because your battery, if it's charging, it should be charging at 
plus. If it's fully charged, your voltage will read 12.7. If it starts reading 11.5, your battery's just about dead. But you can buy char um, charge controllers that tell you the voltage of the battery so you can keep an eye on it. If you don't want to spend the money for that, um, you can buy. This is the charge controller I got about six years ago. Prices have dropped remarkably. This has got no information coming out of it at all. It cost me a hundred bucks. Mm. Now for 30 bucks you can get a much more powerful one that actually has dials and gauges that tell you your battery is almost dead and your solar panel is not producing any electricity and such. But if you get the old cheap one for about three dollars you can get a volt reader off, e off the internet, off Amazon. But if you don't, if you want to get serious, Volts and amps. This is a high-priced unit I got at the Albuquerque flea market. Uh, I just had to replace the fuses in it. 25 bucks for the lousy fuses. But um, if I could open the box, I could show you the one you get from Harbor Freight that's only about $6, which in many respects is just as good. But you get your meters, and whenever you're... you're, you're we'll just... We'll just make more space here. If you have a battery, this is your battery, and and the board is wet, and it's got a, a little light bulb back to here. You break the circuit, put your meter in here, and that'll tell you amps. Your voltmeter, you hook up in parallel here, and that'll tell you volts. So you always have to break the circuit to measure amps. Well, almost always. Once again, if you want to get serious, somewhere in this box, there it is. This is an ammeter you can use for high power circuits. It will read up to 200 amps. You just slide it over the wire and read it. Um, they're fairly expensive, but it's really handy because this is good for 200 amps. This one is good for 10 amps, and if you exceed 10 amps, you blow the fuse. You've got to take it apart and find the fuse. And if it's the Fluke brand high-priced meter, it's going to be a $15 fuse. So that's what you get for that. Um, these will also do volts up to a thousand. They're handy. If you if you go to Harbor Freight, you go. Buy. Oh, there's the other one. There's another clamp-on meter, amp meter. You open it up, you put it over the wire, and it'll tell you how many amps you're drawing. I don't know. If anybody has ever installed a swamp cooler motor, they say take the pulley, adjust the pulley so that it is drawing the number of amps specified on the nameplate of the motor. Nobody in the world ever does that except maybe me, and this is the meter you need to do it with because you clap it over the wire, and then you can adjust the pulley and turn it back on and see how many amps you're drawing, and if the motor says it's supposed to be drawing seven amps and you're drawing nine, you make the pulley smaller again because Pulling nine amps through a motor that's rated for seven, the motor's going to get hot, and it'll burn itself out. So anyway, but for somewhere in here, here it is. This is the five ten dollar meter. It's not good, even good for ten amps. I think it's good for a quarter of an amp, but you know, five ten bucks, you burn it up. It's not going to kill you to throw it out. Yeah, for sale tonight, by the way, five bucks. So after the presentation. <laughs> you want to look carefully at it, and you want to know how to use it, because you've got to move the, 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 the probe wires around, and you've got to say, okay, what is the maximum? It'll tell you. It says 
Oh, this one's 10 amps DC, 10 amp maximum unfused. That means you draw 15 amps through this thing, the magic smoke will come out and you throw it away. You draw 15 amps through the fancy one, the magic smoke will come out, but another $15 and you replace the fuse. I got that one for, I think it was like five bucks at the flea market. You can buy them now. It's an older model, not produced, and I think they're going for 150 bucks on eBay. So that's how I end up with some of this stuff. I forget what question I was answering. Anybody got more questions to save me? Well, we've almost gone 35 minutes. You know, I, I was just looking at me, but I kind of wish you've shown us how that one 100 watt panel won't do the 100 watt refrigerator. I kind of wish you'd show us boxes that will do the 100 watt refrigerator. Well, maybe you add another panel and just show us how that, without doing all that calculation. If you want to get, we will, we will erase some of these numbers. Is that asking too much? Oh no, we could do that fairly easily. We will just start without, um, yeah. We will erase these numbers, we will erase those numbers, we will erase those numbers, we will erase those numbers. Maybe let's do <coughs> erase the battery too. How about we erase the battery, we erase the charge controller. We're simplifying the system and saving a fortune as we do it. <laughs> this is for, you want to get an inverter, and you want to hook it to a solar panel. You're not worried about running the refrigerator at night. You're not worried about what to do on, on a cloudy day. You just want to know if you can run your refrigerator off that inverter when the sun is shining and everything is, is hunky-dory. Is that a reasonable quiet way to put, so. approach this question? Okay. What you want out of here is 110 or 120 volts, and you want 100 watts. So you've got to have 100 watts going into the inverter. And in fact, the inverter is going to lose something, everything loses something, it's going to get hot and the fan's going to come on and some of your electricity is going to get wasted as heat or over a other, head, other overhead. So if it was me, I would probably go with 150 watts going into that inverter just so that you got some slack in the system. So what sort of panel is going to give you actually 150 watts? Well, we're calculating it at, say, 12.5 volts going in. How many amps do you need at 12.5 volts to get 100? Boy, that's, that's tough to read. Uh, remember, watts equals amps times volts. So if you've got, you want 100 and, what did we say? 150 watts, you've got 12.5 volts times how many amps? 12. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're cheating. You're using that thing. I was going to do it in my head. So you need 12 amps. You need 12 amps. 12 amps at um, roughly... 12.5 volts DC going into your inverter, you need a panel that's going to actually produce 12 amps, 12 and a half amps out of that panel. And if you look at the specs on this, 5.6 amps when everything's perfect, three of those panels will do you just fine, I would bet. Because even if the panel's pointed this way and the sun's pointed that way, you're probably still going to get four amps out of each panel. You run them in parallel, 
you add 4 plus 4 plus 4, and you've got 12 amps. And your 12 amps is what you need going into your inverter to get 100 watts and 120 volts out. You're looking puzzly. 4 amps of 100 watt panels. You're going to get 4 amps out of each 100 watt panel. You, you, you want 100, we're talking still 100 watt panels. Yeah, we're talking this panel here. Yeah. It claims 5.63 mm -hmm. at 18 volts, mm -hmm. which I'm sure it produces, but that's not what you get to use, really. I don't know, I mean, your, your inverter can handle, it's not going to blow up if you feed it 18 volts, but I don't know if you're going to get the benefit from that. You might be able to get away with 200 watt panels. I don't know. Or one 200 watt panel. Or one 200 watt panel. Yes, yes. I'm just these are the specs I happen to have and, and whatever. So that's what I was looking at. So if you've got panel number one that produces four amps, and panel number two, these are panels that produce four amps. Panel number three. Four amps. You actually got two wires from each panel, right? And you run them so that. And then your other wire to here. Your other wire to here. So you get. This will be your plus. You're still running whatever it is, 18 volts. This is still your, your negative or zero volts. This is red. This is black, but now out of here, you're getting four, 12 amps. And in fact, I ran into this problem because at the flea market, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, there's a guy with a pile of used, in fact, ancient solar panels. And he says, 50 bucks a pop. They'll produce 10 amps at six volts. I'm thinking, wow, 10 amps at 6 volts. This is just shortly after I paid on Craigslist $185 for a 4 amp 12 volt panel. So 10 amps for 50 bucks is looking like a great deal, but it's 6 volts. I thought, no problem. I take two 6 volt panels, I run them in series, I got 12 volts. It works that way if you work it, run it straight into the inverter. But if you try and run it into your charge controller to charge the battery, you cannot charge a 12 volt battery at 12 volts. Mm -hmm. So I bought six of these panels. I was expecting to run them in, in pairs, get 10 amps from each pair, have 30 amps. No, I ran them in banks of three, so I got 18 volts from each one at 10 amps. So I got enough voltage to go into the, the charge controller <laughs> But I'm only getting 20 amps out of those six panels instead of the 30 amps that I had expected. Is that? It was still a good deal for you know 300 bucks for six panels. They're still sitting out there. They're still producing their 10 amps at six volts. Now it's not such a good deal, but you know, back then it was. Hey, yeah. You uh, exceeded the 12.5 voltage. What happened to the system? I believe you. That, 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 that the 12.5 on the uh, direct current. If you exceeded that, plug this in, plug that in, plug that in, and it took 14 volts. I mean, 14 uh, direct volt. What, what would happen to the system? Would it stop or would it just get it <coughs> shut down? If you're running more than 12 volts, volts require 12 volt, yeah. into an inverter, yeah. I don't know. It did. You have to look at the look at the specs on the inverter. I think the inverter that we've got says that it'll it'll handle anything up to like twenty volts or twenty five volts. Because I don't in know. the AC, if you exceed it, the voltage it'll just it trip. Yeah, <clears throat> the breaker will trip. The same as you exceeded the required voltage on right. the uh, amperage on that uh, amperage on this. So in the DC, I'm not really quite sure if I. Uh, Plucking the refrigerator, or plucking the heater, or plucking my TV, and I'm over here or plucking the stereo, which is next thing. It exceeded um, 12.5. Well, that's, that's all on your 110 volt, volt side yeah. you're plugging in. Hmm. So, okay. What you're worried about, well, what you're worried about there is how many watts 
or amps can your inverter produce? So, for example, if you have a microwave, and you've got a fancy new microwave that's a big old microwave, it's going to be rated at 1,200 watts. Which means if you've got an inverter that's rated for 400 watts, no, 400 watt, a 400 watt inverter, 400 watt inverter will not produce the power to run a 1,200 watt microwave. Your inverter, the alarm will go off, it will shut itself down, and you got no microwave. What I got is a one of these tiny little microwaves out there. It claims to run on 700 watts. I believe it actually uses less than that. And when the sun is shining, and I'm getting power from the battery and from the solar panel, I can turn on that microwave. But if I'm not getting sun, my batteries don't produce enough juice, the battery gets drained, the alarm goes off, the microwave stops. So you start adding up your microwave, however many watts, watts you want, a thousand. If you're adding a, a stereo and you're running it at the same time, and that's another, say, 300 watts, and you've got a TV, that's another 300 watts, and then 300 and then you've got some lights and you're using your your 60 watt incandescent bulbs and you've got a half dozen of those that's another 360 watts and you've got what you've got 2000 watts you're going to need a big honking inverter for that <laughs> you're going to need a more expensive inverter um, i got one at costco that was like a hundred bucks for a thousand watt inverter you can now get the ones in China that claim 2,000 watts for, I don't know what, probably 50, 50 or 100 bucks. But you're going to need a big inverter, and you're going to need to feed a whole lot of amps into that inverter to get that many watts out. In fact, you're going to need to feed 2,000, probably, because you're going to lose something, 2,200 watts in. 2,200 watts at... 12 and a half volts is going to, or 13 volts is going to be 100, a little less than 200 amps. So you're going to need solar panels that are producing 200 amps to run that. And if you're buying these $112 panels that I found on Amazon and you want enough of those to get 200 amps out of those panels and they're producing 4 amps a piece, that's 50 panels? Yeah. 50 panels at 100 bucks a piece, you've got a whole lot of real estate, and you've got $5,000 worth of panels. <laughs> this is one of the reasons I don't have a 1,200 watt. Okay, next question on that is, okay, is it from the solar panel to the inverter, it produces 120 volts, right? Well, the inverter, yeah. you've got 12 volts yeah. going in and 120 okay. coming out. It's 120 volts. What is the person thing that I'm up in the stream rule area? I decided to add on a step up transformer from 120 volt to like 240 volt system. And could it be done? Can sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. You just got to remember that volts times amps equals watts. Mm -hmm. And if you've got 10 watts going into your step up transformer, you're getting, well, nine and a half watts out of your step up transformer. Stepping up the voltage won't give you any more power than you're feeding in to start with. It's really handy if you've got a 500-foot piece of wire you're running, and that's why the, the high power, the high tension lines are running a quarter million volts, is because you need a lot fewer amps at, at 250,000 volts than you would need at 12 volts. But it's 250,000, so you save a lot on the copper there, but you're not getting any other... You're not, you're not magically producing more power, because... So the inverter can only, if I wanted to, I can have the in, in, inverter produce me 50 volt, and then by adding that the step-up transformer, I can come up with 120 volt, 240 volts. It, 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 what, can it be done? I don't know what you can buy for, for inverters. The ones I've in. shopped for, they produce 120 volts, because... I want to plug in refrigerators and hot pots and 120 volts things. I don't know. 
Okay. Actually, I did see an inverter that, that was producing five volts AC at one point. It was at a, a sale of salvaged uh, surplus equipment for Sandia Laboratories. Why they wanted to produce five volts AC from five volts DC, I don't know. But they made such a thing. But if you go on, on okay. Amazon or whatever, you talk to these folks, I'm sure what you've got is inverters that take either 12 or 24 or possibly 36 volts in and they produce 120 volts out because I want to point it there because that's what your, your plug-in hot pot is going to need is your 120 volts. That's what your microwave needs. That's what your stereo needs, all that sort of stuff. Um, you, you could put the, of course, you can't put a transformer on DC. It doesn't work. It has to be AC, right? right? On right. the AC side, transformers don't work on the DC. But if you put it on the AC and you double step up transformers, it, as long as there's a voltage coming in there, you can step from any uh, low voltage up to like on, 120, on 240. Not it. You can't. AC. It, it doesn't work not with the DC. Direct, not the direct. AC. No. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. But but okay. when you step up, but this is the AC that's put it up, right? Yeah. But on you, this side of the inverter is AC. Yeah. yeah. When you double your voltage, you, you cut your antigen half, so you're not gaining any power. You're just changing the voltage. Well, not we're, not, hey, we're not changing the amperage. Is that what the amperage goes down. You've got to come up with the same formula. Remember the formula? Yeah, the amps formula. times volts yeah. equals watts. Same voltage on the same line. Double the voltage, half the amps. <laughs> Can't create something. I've got to get now. back to my NEC push. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And a watts is going to be constant. <laughs> okay. No matter what, if you've got 1,200 watts in that system, you've got 1,200 watts, and whether it's 12 volt, 1,200 um, volts at one amp or 12 volts at 100 amps, it's still 1,200 watts. And whether, you, as Bill was saying, you double the voltage, you have the amperage. That's why a lot of your water heaters, you've got an electric water heater, it's running at 240 volts because that means half as many amps. Half as many amps means you don't need the big wire, you need the littler wire which is cheaper to wire up. So okay. that's why it works that way. That's a question. Good question. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. I did. Yeah. I think you've grilled enough. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>